Smokeless tobacco is a ground tobacco that's fermented. Uh, and it's placed inside the mouth. Nicotine is absorbed and it's addictive as cigarettes. It causes mouth cancer, pancreatic cancer, and lesions within the mouth. It's not a safe alternative to cigarettes. More recently, the companies have brought out what's called snus. It's drier than smokeless tobacco. It also comes in a pouch. And for a smoker, it supposedly is a very attractive temporary substitute in s places where you can't smoke. Well, the people who use smokeless tobacco are young males, particularly those in sport. They see the baseball player chewing or dipping. And they serve as very powerful role models. We were observing a 6% increase in smokeless tobacco use in the country, and that's something relatively new. While at the same time, cigarette smoking was declining about 3%. So we went out to figure out what are the factors that are driving the use of smokeless tobacco. And so we took a multiple data sets, analyzed them very, very carefully, and probably more, most importantly looked at who were the new users of these products. And we looked at magazine advertising and found over the past 10 years, since the attorney general sued the tobacco industry, including one smokeless tobacco manufacturer, uh, to stop targeting kids that, in fact, there's been an increase in advertising for smokeless tobacco products. Uh, there's also been a price war. That is, uh, one company, Conwood, has slashed the prices of smokeless tobacco to compete against another company. And we know price is a very, very strong determinant of use, so that's in play. Um, but probably the most important factor that we looked at was free nicotine. Free nicotine is nicotine that readily absorbs through the gums into the mouth, making the product highly addictive. We found companies are controlling free nicotine, actually increasing the levels. Uh, one company in particular that increased free nicotine, their market share grew by 18%. Um, the research also found um, a proliferation of sub-brands. That is, there's a lot more brands out there today than there were just 10 years ago. By and large, those brands are highly flavored with apple flavors. This is one with uh, citrus blend. And, you know, in a sense, it's like adulteration of food. These products are highly toxic, and when you start throwing apple flavors in, it's probably no different than what occurred in 1906 when manufacturers would throw sugar into rancid meat to increase their sales. So overall, we looked at um, marketing of the product, which is up, price competition, which is resulting in cheaper prices, cheaper products, proliferation of brands, particularly those using candy-like flavors. But the most important finding was the controlling the drug nicotine by increasing its level and making these products more addictive to young people. That is the most disturbing finding. I think what's very frightening is the entry of the cigarette industry into the smokeless tobacco market. In September of 2008, Philip Morris USA acquired U.S. tobacco company, the largest smokeless tobacco company. Back three years ago, R.J. Reynolds bought Conwood, the second largest. So the, it, so the market, which was previously dominated by smokeless tobacco ma manufacturers who had no interest in selling cigarettes, are now controlled by the cigarette industry. And we're seeing brands like Marlboro Snuff being sold next to Marlboro Cigarettes, Camel Snus being sold next to uh, Camel Cigarettes. And the major concern is these companies are deathly afraid of the decline in cigarette smoking. And to the extent we can get a product out there that promotes dual use, that is you can use this as a stopgap measure until you can have your cigarette, we have a major public health problem on our hands. I think it requires more research to understand what the impact of the cigarette companies are, but intuitively, intuitively, they're making this move into the market to arrest the decline in cigarette smoking just to perpetuate um, the epidemic of smoking-related diseases. Um, we have to address this problem today. Um, if we don't, we're going to see an increase in mouth cancer and probably uh, an increase in cigarette smoking. Number one, this product is taxed at the federal level one-tenth the level of a pack of cigarettes. We have to equalize taxation both at the state and federal level. We need public education programs not only on cigarette smoking but on smokeless tobacco to alert that young user about the dangers of mouth cancer 
uh, and other diseases associated with smokeless tobacco products. The FDA bill, most importantly, would allow the control of flavorants such as apple, citrus, and get them out of these products so they're not attractive to young people. And more importantly, control-free nicotine. Nicotine is where the business is. Nicotine is where the action is. The FDA bill has passed the House. It's pending in the Senate. And it would give explicit authority to the agency to control free nicotine. So such things as a graduation strategy to target young people is off the table. Such things as changing nicotine levels to increase use rates among high-risk population is off the table. We as a nation have to wake up as the cigarette industry has woken up and take this problem seriously.